What's going on YouTube? Braden Barrett here with Look Like You Lift, and I'm going to show you uh, my workout from today and kind of go over some context of what my workouts will be looking like uh, for the next 16, 20 weeks, maybe a year. I don't know. Um, so I've really wanted to get into uh, DC training uh, founded by the great Dante Trudell. So I've really wanted to get into that. I've been studying it for a long time. I finally have been able to pull the trigger on actually going full-fledged DC training. So um, I've done it for the past two weeks, and this is my first, uh, this is my second round through all of the uh, training sessions. So I will be documenting uh, upper bodies A, B, and C, and lower bodies A, B, and C. This workout is upper body A. I'll be walking you through exactly what I'm doing and uh, giving you some context of what DC training looks like. So first exercise of the day is an incline barbell bench press. Now, for those of you who know DC training, every extra, every set, there's only one set and it is to all out maximal failure with rest pause. So, um, I believe Dante has specified that there needs to be, um, three, so two rest pauses. So three, sets in one set. You'll see what I mean here in just a second. But that's pretty much what every exercise here except for the last exercise of the day has been uh has been for the past 2 weeks is um rest pause training, one set to failure. And I'm actually I'm actually a huge fan of the one set to failure model. Um I really liked Mike Menzer's philosophy and how he uh was a you know, proponent of lower body training or sorry, low volume training. And, uh, I've adopted that. I grew tremendously. I use it all the way through my cut. And then I, uh, became one of, uh, Jordan Peters clients. And the reason why I went with Jordan Peters in the first place is because he is very similar to Mike Menzer and Mike Menzer. I believe that Jordan Peters, Scott Stevenson and Dante Trudell have pretty much perfected on what Mike Menzer started. So um, what I'm doing here is I'm taking my uh, 12 to 15 deep breaths. I went to failure on this first set, 12 to 15 breaths, and then I'm going into my second, I guess, part, second part of set number one. Um, I will say safety is, is, safety comes first with this. I do have these um, safety bars here in case I, uh, have poor judgment and I can't actually rack it. I can actually just throw it here onto these safety bars and I'll be fine. Uh, don't be an idiot. Be safe. So failed there. Take another couple breaths. Uh, pardon the distended gut. Um, I'm pretty bloated from, uh, the past four weeks of me completely screwing off on my diet. Um, so hopefully we can get that back down this week or two, in the next week or two. Okay, so this is my final part of my first set. <sighs> Controlling the negative. I'm not going down to touch my chest or anything. I'm going through the most effective range of motion, um, which is a little different from a full range of motion. Okay, that is the first exercise, incline bench press. And then we move into dumbbell overhead press. So my shoulders are pretty effed up from my days of strongman. So I've been kind of having to baby my shoulders a little bit, but uh, I've done a lot of rehab over the past year. So they're feeling good. So I think I can push them. So I've been going to failure on my shoulders recently and they've been doing pretty well. So they've been responding pretty well. So, um, I think I found out what really has been messing up my shoulders and it was the barbell overhead press, uh, which is a primary movement that I train all of my beginners on because it is such an effective exercise. But for me, it, I just kept hurting my shoulder and, you know, instead of being dogmatic with that exercise, I just decided to just get rid of the exercise. So here I am taking my breaths. Um, another big thing about um, DC training is uh, tempo. 
Um, I'm not the best with tempo. I actually kind of suck at tempo. I try to control the negative the best I can and explode on the positive the best I can, but I know that I can squeeze a little bit more. Um, I'll go ahead and get set up. Actually, let me show you my setup here real quick. This is what I found to be the most effective, especially if you guys have bad shoulders. Um, use the knee to kick up the weight into position, rest it on the shoulder, and you'll notice how um, I have the weight. Sorry. I have the weight sitting on the shoulder and then the palm and the elbow pointed up. So my elbow's up really, really high. So it's almost like a tricep extension to get into position. So it, it prevents a lot of shoulder strain. Um, Cause I, I find that like always trying to press from the bottom in the first rep, it hurts, but I find that actually resting on the shoulder and just tricep extending up to the top has been really, really helpful. Um, so I make a lot of weird noises, so pardon my faces and my noises. So again, breathing, taking my breaths. And I go again. Um, with these breaths, they're not like short little breaths. They are controlled. That's one breath, and you do that like 12 to 15 times in between each rest pause. So... Go to failure. And failure is like literally you can't, and it's it's eccentric failure here. So, um, so I'm sorry, it's concentric failure here. So basically, where you can't do the positive of the movement anymore. So I couldn't do the positive anymore. So that's where I, that's basically done. So this next exercise, quick context with this. So this next exercise is a weighted dip. Um, so like I said, this is round two of these exercises last week when I did the weighted dip I was on an actual um, an actual dip bar the grip was too wide and it was putting strain on my shoulders and I was also putting a lot of the tension on my on my chest and so what I'm doing here is what I used to do when I just trained in a barbell facility is I took two barbells put it inside a safety rack or a, a squat cage and I actually put these pretty narrow so that I, I can use my triceps more and take a lot of the stress off of my shoulders. Um, <laughs> but error on my part, this is the same weight that I did last uh, for, uh, on the last round where I had a wider grip and more muscle mass was being used in the exercise. With this setup, only my triceps and my shoulders are really doing most of the work. So with the reduction in muscle mass... You should also reduce the weight. I didn't do that. I should have got between 15 and 20 repetitions for the entire set. I got like five. <laughs> so I knew I was in trouble after rep number two. I was like, oh, this is pretty hard. I don't know how I'm going to get 20, but we'll keep going. So I kept going. Okay, so that was concentric failure. Take my breaths. I'm thinking to myself, damn, I went way too heavy. You can see my gut really bad here. You can see how just absolute bloated I am. I really me I really messed up my gut uh, from the past four weeks. So I learned my lesson. We're never doing that again. Next time we have a cut, we're going to have an exit strategy <laughs> to prevent this from happening ever again. So it's not, don't worry guys, it's not like an accumulation of body fat that's causing that gut. It's like gastrointestinal bloat. So this is uh, round number two. And I'm like, ah, I'm in trouble. Okay, so that's rep number two. Or sorry, round number two, part two. I don't know what you would call it because it's not another set. It's the same set. So I don't know what you would call it. Part two. Maybe I should ask Dante. What would you call it? Anyway, breathing. Getting ready for my final repetition or final part of the set. Could only do the the eccentric portion of this part. Couldn't even lift myself up. So, oh, I got myself up. All right, I did better than I thought. So, but I wrote that down. I wrote it in my logbook. Hey, since it's new form, reduce the weight significantly. Okay. So next exercise. This is um, I call it the wide grip lat pull down. I'm actually not a big fan of like having the grip 
all the way out here on these ends. Unless you're like six foot six, I don't really don't think you need to be gripping out that wide. Um, I think this grip for a wide grip lat pull down is perfectly fine because what's important here, like I've said before, is the most effective range of motion. Having the grip all the way out here in the very ends trains the lat, which is what we're trying to train here, in a very shortened range of motion. So a more effective range of motion is going to be out here. So I also am using straps here so that my grip is not the reason for me failing. It is the muscular exhaustion. So big fan of using straps. I usually use figure eight straps, um, which is a strongman implement uh, or a strongman tool. Um, but I didn't have them today. I had to use these. Uh, I'm actually not a big fan of these. I actually like figure eights. So same thing here. I'm pulling, I'm, I'm pulling down explosively. So con concentric is, is quick. And then the negative is nice and slow. Um, a big thing that I see a lot of people messing up with their lat pull downs and their chin ups and everything is they try to pull from the arm first. Okay. If you're pulling from the arm, your, your back isn't doing any of the work. Okay. And so that's why you're, you can't grow a big thick back. So while I'm breathing, I'm taking my breath. I'm going to explain this. So you want to think about like your scapula, your shoulder blade. You want to think about trying to pull your shoulder blade down first without having to bend your arm. Okay, so you should see this motion. And I actually do that as a warm up in these exercises. I just focus on trying to pull my shoulder blade down. And that should be the first part of the movement. And then you can pull through the lat and then you can pull through the arm. <sighs> That's the only way that you can do this without, you know, trying to get a bicep workout and actually just training your back the, the correct way. So I'm strapping up again, getting ready to go. I pull down through the scapula, pull down through the lat, and then I and I also give a bit of a squeeze at the very bottom too. I squeeze, try to think that I'm trying to squeeze my elbow to my lat, like I'm pinching my uh, armpit. I'm trying to squeeze my armpit together. Um, another big thing that I see is a, a, a big tell if you're not using your back in your in your pull downs is if you're slouching at the bottom. Okay, if I see like a rounded back at the bottom then I know that you're not using your back completely. Your chest should be lifted up at the bottom of the lat pull. Like your nipples are pointed at the ceiling. That's how you know that you're doing it correctly. Uh, breathe in again. I know it's really boring. I feel bad for my wife having to film me in my rest pauses because it's probably not very fun. So, I'm just breathing. Why can I not click on anything now? Hang on. Hang on, guys. There we go. Maybe? Nope. I can't click on my video. What the heck? Is it Loom's fault? I think it's Loom's fault. <sighs> All right, whatever. We'll keep going. I'll just use my keyboard. Same thing here, just pulling through, squeezing, and then controlling the negative. And this would be considered concentric failure. I can't get a full rep done, even though I'm trying to pull it down, can't, so that's where we call it. Okay, oh wait. Still going. Wait, am I? Yeah, okay. I don't know, there's a glitch. Okay, so now we're getting ready for deadlifts. Deadlifts are the final exercise of the day. This is not a rest pause exercise. This is a, um, a straight set. And this is also to technical failure, not concentric failure, because we want to be, we want to be safe with this. Um, with these bigger exercises, we want to try to do like technical failure. Like if I were to do another repetition, if I were to do another rep, it would not be pretty. Um, it would not be technically sound. That's kind of where we would want to end. So we're still working hard. We're still adding weight to the barbell every single time. We're still adding repetitions, but I'm not completely pushing toward a, I'm not pushing past um, a point where the, the risk to the reward is no longer worth it. So, 
Um, I get a lot of people who ask why I lift in weightlifting shoes um, and why I have my clients lift in weightlifting shoes. My headphones got in the way. <laughs> They're slipping off. So um, I can go into that in another video. Uh, but the biggest thing is, look, I'm not a power lifter. I'm not a strong man. I'm not trying to go for any world records here. So it doesn't matter if I'm pulling with a lifting shoe on. That's the first thing. The second thing is the shoe actually allows for me to get my lower back and extension a little bit better so I don't have to think about it as much. Um, so for, with previous back issues, that's kind of what I what I need. So I actually really enjoy lifting and lifting shoes. Um, so leave me alone. <laughs> okay, so that's pretty much it, guys. That is um, That was upper body session A. Um, there's A, B, and C, and then there's lower body A, B, and C, and then we cycle through them. So this week is upper body A, Wednesday's, or sorry, today's Tuesday. So today is upper body A, Thursday is lower body A, Saturday is going to be upper body B. Next week it'll be lower body B, upper body C, lower body C. Did I do that right? A, A, B, B, C, C. Um... So yeah, pretty fun. Really excited to do this style of training. I've wanted to do it for a long time, but I haven't been advanced enough to try it. So I feel like I'm finally at that point where I'm ready to give it a shot. So I feel really good about it. Um, thanks for watching, guys. I'll be doing more of these. I'll be doing one of each uh, one of my days of training so you guys can check it out. And uh, you can even ask yourself, are you training hard enough? So, okay, guys, thanks for watching this. Like and subscribe, and uh, we'll talk soon.